Hello, this is a very brief Git tutorial. We're going to go through the five most common Git commands and let's get started. I am starting in a completely empty directory and now I'm going to create a repository in this directory and I'm going to start tracking my changes. The first thing I will do is git init uh, my repo. What that does is it initializes an empty git repository, which is right in this directory. It is called my repo because that's the name that I gave it when I pass git in it. Let's cd into it. And now I can start tracking some changes. I'm going to create a file called readme. This is just a regular text editor. I just so happen to use Emacs, but obviously you can use whatever you prefer. I will say this is the uh, git tutorial and I'm going to save it. I just saved it and I'm going to exit my Emacs. And if I now go with a second command, which would be git status, it would tell me that I am on a branch called master, that I have no commits, and that there are some untracked files in this directory. In particular, the file, the file called readme.md. Now, how do I make sure that this file is tracked by git? The first thing that I have to do is to add readme.md into the staging area of git. I will explain much later what the concept of a staging area is, but for now it suffices to say that I git add readme.md that will tell you that it is a change that is ready to be committed, so it is staged, but I have not committed it yet, so I have to do that. Git commit and I provide a commit message. I will say create repo add readme. And now if I finally do git status again, it'll tell me that I am on branch master and that there is nothing to commit, the working tree is clean. Namely that everything that is under this directory has been committed into the git repository. So let's review again, we checked init, which is for initializing a git repository, status, which is to retrieve the current status of the directory where I'm working on, then we did add, which is to pass a file from the regular working directory into the staging area of Git. Then we did commit, which if I pass with a, a flag minus M for message and I provide the message, then it will add it there. I will uh, explain a final command called log, git log. It will tell me what I just did. It has the commit, which is given a unique identifier. Who did it? When did you do it? and what did you do, which is what the description that you provided. Let's do other modifications to that file. So I'll open up the file again. Uh, that's my readme.md uh, file. And I will say, I just showed you uh, six commands, uh, which were init, um, status, add, commit, and I guess log, they were five. Well, if I know how to count, it would be better. So I saved it, I close back again, go back to status, and it tells me the same thing, that I modify, modify the readme.md file. Ignore this file at a time. The tilde files is just a, an artifact of my using Emacs, which creates a tilde file as a backup. So just ignore this part. You will probably not see it unless you're using Emacs too. It's just telling me you modify, you modified readme.md. So I have to add readme.md and uh, commit, uh, give me uh, the, the change that I just put there. And it'll say I up update contents of readme. Again, I can do the same thing. Uh, this is the final thing I do. Save it. Go back here. Tells me exact same thing. Now it's modified again. I hit add the readme commit the incorporate final message in readme. And if I do git status again, it'll tell me, let me get rid of that. It tells me that I 
have nothing to commit, my working directory is clean. If I do git log again, it'll tell me the three things that I just showed you, create the repo, update the contents, and incorporate the final message. And this is a little bit overwhelming, right? It's too much information probably. So there's a nice option to pass, one line, and it will tell me exclusively the message that I provide to it. Now, there's a thousand things about Git that we have not discussed, but what I just showed you is, I would say, 85% of the daily use. Git init, add, commit, status, log. I do this over and over and over again. Now, my workflow can be a little bit faster because here I am again back in Emacs because I have bindings in my Emacs editor that automatically communicate to Git what I'm trying to do. I'm going to show you how that looks like in Emacs, but chances are that your editor has its own set of bindings for Git, and the idea would be the same. By learning those bindings, which are, is normally a shortcut with a keyboard, you can work very, very fast. In my case, if I just make a change and I say, uh, this is a change I promised not to do, and I just save it and I do control X V V and then control X V V it'll I do it twice. One is for adding and one is for committing. Notice how it's popping a screen telling me the summary. This is the equivalent of that message. I say add another change and then I close it. Then I add yet another change. Save it, control X V V another summary. Uh, continue adding changes and I again get out of there final final change save vb uh, finalize for real so notice how I did not have to leave my uh, terminal I did not have to close emacs I did not have to do anything strange as a matter of fact we barely noticed that I was interacting with git the point that I'm trying to make here is that the sooner you get used to the bindings for your editor, I don't know if it's Microsoft, uh, uh, I think it's called uh, Visual Code or something like that, or any of the modern editors that you can find for free in many different places, uh, they will have some set of uh, shortcuts. The sooner you learn them, the quicker Git will become a second nature and you will be able to do very specific and brief changes. The secret of Git is to track as discreetly as possible. So why? So that your Git log one line can look uh, orderly. Notice how I always use an imperative voice, namely I start with a verb, I start with an uppercase, then I continue as a normal sentence. I always start with a verb in imperative voice. I never go past 70 characters and I never put a period at the end. If you do that, then you are able to have this very, very clean log of changes. If someone needs you to communicate to them what is the last set of things that you did, you can just run that command, put it in a, a mail.txt message, and when you want to send an email, you simply uh, copy-paste and you tell them what you did. That's one reason. Another reason is that it's much easier to know uh, what you did when it starts with a verb. Imagine that you are telling the computer what to do and then it magically does it. Uh, that's how you could read the log. Computer, create a repo, add a readme, update the contents of the readme, incorporate the final message. So if you could imagine having a magic wand and telling the computer what to do, uh, just use that as your commit message. The final thing, if you cannot uh, state it clearly and in less than uh, 70 characters, it's probably that your change was too big. And that's a very good indication that your change was too big. The problem when you add very big changes is that it's impossible to incorporate a few of the modifications if something was wrong. If I modify 50 files in a single commit, then it becomes I either eat the 50 files, possibly with, a, with an error, or it's better to receive 50 commits even if each one of them is very small. I can say, okay, these 47 commits are okay, so I can eat them and know that everything is fine. 
and the other three, I can just, you know, pay more attention to them. So this is just the very, very, very basics on how to use Git in the command line. And I will create more videos to show you more advanced uh, usage of, of Git. Uh, if you learn it like this and you practice with it for about, I don't know, a couple of weeks or so and really try to make it a second nature as you are working, using tools meant to simplify Git will become much more powerful. However, if you go right now and start using a tool, uh, there's many tools out there for simplifying how to use Git. If you go straight ahead and try to use those tools, you will never quite understand how Git works and it will be much more confusing uh, to use those tools. The tools are full of buttons, they are full of options, they are full of settings, and it becomes overwhelming to understand what the tool is actually doing. In reality, believe me, those five uh, uh, commands that I just showed you, init, add, commit, status, and log, will be, for the most part, what you do every day. On the next video, we will do pull, push, check out and start working on uh, collaboration. Namely, when you have one repository here, but you want to interact with another person that has another repository, or when you interact through a common server, for example, GitLab or GitHub. All right, let's see, let's hope that works. Bye-bye.